Hi, so the next thing I wanted to do with my RC2014 is run CPM on it. And to run CPM, uh, we're going to need some kind of storage medium. And uh, the storage device that I decided to use was a compact flash uh, card. Um, you probably remember these from the late 90s or the early 2000s, um, used in many uh, digital cameras. Um, and the reason for using this is because it uh, interfaces relatively simply up to the 8-bit uh, C80 uh, microprocessor. There were several websites on the internet that were helpful um, in implementing this circuit and uh, diagnosing it and figuring out how to program it. Um, primary among those was probably Grant Searle's CPM page, which um, already had a compact flash interface and my uh, circuit here is very similar to that. So let's take a look at how it actually works. As with all of my other boards, we start out with a uh, 3D8 decoder, 74HCT138N. So this will allow you to put it at uh, hex address 0, hex address 20, 40, uh, 60, 80, A0, uh, C0, or E0. Um, and via this jumper block here, you can put a jumper and select which one of those you want. So uh, that address is decoded and forms the uh, chip select zero line for the uh, compact flash card. Um, there's a total of three address lines that go to the compact flash card, address uh, zero, one, and two. That together with CS0 gives you eight registers that you can read and write. Um, we're going to operate this in 8-bit uh, true IDE mode, so we don't need all the other address lines and we want to tie them to ground. There's another eight uh, registers that could be used, and those would be selected by this CS1 line, but we don't need those. Um, so we're going to uh, tie CS1 high. Just moving on down the compact flash, we've got an ATA cell pin. Uh, we ground that to operate the compact flash in true IDE mode. Uh, there's a C cell, which is cable select. We ground that to operate it in uh, master. This uh, pin 44 is actually DMAC in uh, true IDE mode and is used to uh, control DMA transfers to and from the compact flash. We don't want any DMA, so we're going to pull that to 5 volt. Uh, pin 36 is unused and the specification says tie that to 5 volt, so we do that. Now down here for uh, IO read and IO write, when, when I first implemented this circuit I tried to just hook this up to the Z80's read and write and uh, surprisingly uh, that uh, that didn't work. Um, you know I figured it would because we had IO requests going up here to the address decoding from the chip select read and write. It kinda worked, it wasn't reliable so I followed uh, Grant Searle's schematic and I did combine the read and write signals with uh, the IO request signal to generate an IO read and an IO write so this pin will be pulsed low whenever there is a read. That one will be pulsed low whenever there is a write. Reset down here connects to the Z80's reset pin. Over here we've got eight uh, data lines. We're going to operate in 8-bit mode. We do not need the other uh, eight data lines. Those would be for 16-bit mode. Uh, this DASP pin is, is kind of a curious thing. It forms uh, for most of the compact flash cards, it, it forms a uh, an activity LED, so you can see when the compact flash card is active. Uh, it also has something to do with the master-slave protocol that I didn't really understand from my quick uh, skimming of the spec. And in at least uh, in one of the cards I have, the, the card does something really strange. It times out for 30 seconds waiting for uh, to check and see if there's a slave. I, I suspect that's something to do with this DASP pin being improperly implemented or using an older version of the spec or something on that particular card. Um, but in this case, we just hook an LED up to it and a dropping resistor for the LED. Uh, PDIAG is another pin that has something to do with the master-slave protocol. Tie it to 5 volt. The rest of this stuff we don't need and it's just unconnected. So here is the board that I, uh, that I uh, designed and implemented for the RC2014 Compact Flash. You can see the, the, the bulk of it here is taken up by this socket. That's where our Compact Flash card is going to plug in. 
Um, this socket is a surface mount device. Uh, you can buy them on DigiKey. I have the DigiKey part number listed on my uh, website. Uh, it's, there's a total of 50 pins down there. As you can probably tell, they're very close together. Uh, for me, I have some some very uh, minimal experience working with SMD devices and some tools so I did have some solder paste and the way I soldered this was I laid down a track of uh, solder paste then I took my hot air gun and melted the solder paste and then I came back with desoldering wick and cleaned up any bridges that had formed between the uh, between the pins so that's it's a great way to do it if you do in fact have the SMD tools. Um, if you don't, there are other techniques for doing this with a normal iron. Uh, you could Google uh, drag soldering, which involves uh, putting solder on the tip of the soldering iron and then dragging it down, then cleaning it up with, uh, with a desoldering wick. Um, for, for a retro computer kit, and boards and stuff that are mostly through hole it's, it's kind of a pain that we end up with this one SMD component but you really don't have a choice because that's how they make the sockets um, over here we can see the LED the dropping resistor for the LED there's some jumpers uh, right here here and here uh, those were in my original version of the board because I had some alternative ways I wanted to try implementing things uh, basically had to do with those read and write pins um, if you order one of the boards off of Osh Park, just make sure to jumper it the way I've jumpered it here. These two in the up position, that one in the down position. Um, here's the address select jumper. I think I have uh, jumpered it to address E0. Um, you'll have to note that that does differ from uh, the addresses that uh, Grant Searle uses on his uh, CPM page, so I did have to uh, reassemble uh, the CPM BIOS and such for uh, having compact flash E0. Um, down here is 3D8 decoder and up here is the OR gate that combines uh, IO requests with read and write. Uh, that's it, pretty simple board. Um, compact flash card, it just plugs and kind of snaps into place. There's no release lever or anything to get it out. You just pull on it. Um, it's recommended you get either 64 megabyte or 128 megabyte compact flash cards. I've had good luck with these uh, Fuji ones. Uh, let me see what else. I know I've got some other ones around here. Got a handful of other ones I tried. Um, more Fuji ones. This here is a Mr. Flash. It worked fine. Uh, the Cisco 64 megabyte, you can find those on uh, eBay quite plentiful. Um, I used, uh, was able to try that one out. It seemed to work. Uh, there's a PQI. That one worked fine. Uh, there's a WinTech. It also worked fine. Uh, one that didn't work was this. Uh, this Viking one, this one had the uh, the weird 30 second timeout um, issue that I mentioned uh, before where when you power on the card, it is sit there in busy state for 30 seconds waiting for a slave, I think. And uh, that, something to do with that uh, DASP pin was my guess, but I would avoid that uh, Viking card for that reason. It also had a sand disc. This one didn't work for me at all. Um, that could just be that this is a broken card. Don't know for sure. Uh, but you can find find compact flash cards on uh, on eBay quite plentiful, old used ones. I would suggest you get a couple different ones just in case uh, some of them are bad or some are incompatible or something. Just try to grab you know two or three different brands if you can. Okay, it's time to do the live demo portion of the uh, of the video. So let me unplug the RC2014. Uh, the compact flash um, adapters back here in slot 6 I have it. Um, I have a uh, Mr. Flash compact flash card. I'll plug it in. Uh, I found that I always have to plug them in while the power is off. Uh, for whatever reason it doesn't seem to uh, hot plug properly. And then plug it in. And uh, hit the reset button. Um, in this RC2014, I have 
as usual my bus monitor board in the front jumper this so it shows IO operations and you know maybe we'll be able to see something um, as it's operating um, so let's let's try it out so I I had to modify the uh, basic um, I had to modify the basic interpreter that came with the RC 2014 I used uh, Grant Searle's uh, assembly source for that and I added three new operations uh, those were disk in it, uh, disk read, and disk write. So let's take a quick look at the changes I made to the basic interpreter so that we can uh, see how the compact flashcard is actually programmed. So starting out here, I defined eight different uh, symbols for the eight registers of the compact flashcard, uh, starting with the first one at E0. That's based on how I jumpered the uh, how I jumpered the board. So the first one is at E0. The next one is at E1, E2, E3, etc. So starting out here, there's some helper functions. Um, one of them is to set the logical block address. Setting the logical block address is a matter of writing a total of four different registers. Uh, register number three gets the lowest bits. Um, register number four gets the next eight bits. Register number five gets the next eight. And then uh, register number six will get... Uh, another four bits um, and then it ors that uh, with E0 and uh, E0 is the bits that you set in that last register to specify that you're using LBA mode rather than uh, disk sector track mode. Uh, the other helper function here, there's two of them, this one is a wait ready and this one uh, it queries I7 which is the status register and waits for the ready bit to be set and the busy bit to be unset. Uh, the next one is uh, wait data request. Um, and what it does is it uh, queries register I7 and waits for the uh, data request bit to be set. So looking down here at uh, D in it, there's uh, two steps to initializing the disk. First, we're going to wait for it to be ready. Then we're going to write uh, one to uh, register one and an EF to register uh, 7. So EF is the set feature command and so what we're doing is we're setting feature number 1 uh, which is to enable the card to operate in 8-bit mode. That's important because uh, we've only connected 8 of the data pins. We're going to wait for it to become ready after that and now we're going to execute uh, set feature on feature 82. So what that does is it turns off a write cache. Then we'll wait for it to be ready again and the last thing we do down here is uh, we execute the uh, get disk ID. So that's a good way to test um, that we're talking to the card. Uh, EC is the di get disk ID command. So we send that to register 7. Um, we wait for data request and then we can read the disk ID. So let's uh, talk about um, the read and write commands. So the read command, what we do is we, uh, we do a wait for it to be ready. We call that uh, set logical block address helper. And then we write uh, hex 20 to register 7. Wait for the data request uh, bit to be set. And then this loop down here reads a total of uh, 512 bytes. And then looking here at the disk write, um, very similar to read, so we wait for it to be ready. Uh, we set the logical block address, we execute command uh, 30 hex, which is the write command, uh, wait for the, the data request ready to be set again, and then we execute this loop which transfers 512 bytes. So let me, uh, let me paste in a sample program here. I've written a demo. Uh, the demo program will allow us to read and write the disk. So there's an example of the dread operation and uh, dwrite, as well as I can find it uh, d in it. Um, and the reason I did those in assembly rather than basic was I found that the write operation simply wasn't reliable to uh, to do that in basic. the The compact flash card did time out because the basic interpreter was just too slow at writing. Um, so it's kind of unfortunate 
we couldn't do the entire, you know, simple demo and basic. We had to resort to modifying the interpreter to, to do those uh, routines in assembly. But nevertheless, we can demonstrate how the card works. So there, the card has a, a disk ID function. Um, so if we print the disk ID, it will tell us some stuff. You know, in here is the serial number of the card. Um, there's some stuff about features. Um, if you read the compact flash spec, it'll tell you how to parse this block. Um, all the interesting stuff was up here around the, the front of the block. Uh, the other thing we can do is we can read a sector. So let's just read whatever's in sector zero. Uh, we'll see some, there's, you know, this is, a, this is a compact flash card that was probably in use on a computer. So it's got, you know, some kind of DOS partition block stuff. You know, I can see invalid partition table, error loading operating system. That sounds like some kind of, you know, some, some kind of stuff that came with whatever operating system was installed in this card. So let's try reading sector uh, 31. So that'll be read on 31. Uh, so what you're seeing on here is just the, uh, the port access is from printing on the console because... Uh, because it actually reads the uh, card very fast. But if we write the card, um, let's write sector 31, and for data I'll say Scott was here, and press return, and it wrote it. You know, it, it happened very quickly. You may have noticed some uh, spinning of the, the port stuff there. And now if we read sector 31, we see it has the string Scott was here in sector 31. So that's, that's the basic uh, demo of the disk. Thank you for watching my video. Please visit my website at www.smbaker.com for more electronics projects and sandrail stuff. Bye.